Jacob, where all the discussion is on central banking and how they should respond to inflation and now to financial stability concerns like the UK and whether those things are going to be at odds and this is going to prevent them from moving forward with the inflation fight. What do you think? Well, indeed, uh, the last uh, few days have demonstrated again that financial markets are extremely sensitive to news, extremely judging, now without any mercy, but conducting referendum on a daily basis on what is coming to them. And this means, uh, therefore, that policies must be presented to the market in a very clear way, transparent, and clear. And I think that what is happening there now, in addition to the fundamentals that we are not going to go into, I think that the communication with the market did not pay enough attention that the market listens and reads through when there is lack of depth in the preparation and in the presentation. In any event, the fact of the matter is that we are part of a more global scene. Central banks all over the world, and I'm mm -hmm. now in the United States or the Federal Reserve, for example, are clearly have been behind the curve. But it is not just behind the curve in the sense that uh, inflation came as a surprise, but really behind the curve in a much earlier sense. You spoke about financial markets. For a long time, interest rates were kept too low for too long. And of course, it was a good reason. We need to make sure that the economy recovers, the post-pandemic and all of this kind of thing. But unconventional monetary policy must be mm. temporary by definition. And I think that what happened here, that by pushing interest rates down excessively, yeah. investors were pushed to chase after, after yield. They have taken excessive risk. Pricing of risk was distorted, cooperation engaged in buybacks instead of investment in plant and, in, and uh, equipment. And there has become, as a result, a disconnect between the financial sector and the real economy. And for a while, people yeah. thought that there is no inflation anymore. But there was inflation. It was not in the CPI. It was in the stock market, as one uh, would no, expect that the interest rate is zero. Yeah, no, you were warning about that for a long time, that the, that the asset markets were showing the inflation and that the central banks were staying too long at the party and not anticipating it. I think the question now, Jacob, is how the Fed reacts at this point. It's trying to catch up, and there are now calls for, for it to potentially moderate or slow down because of what's happening in the economy and in the markets. What would you say to do? Yes, well, there were two parts of what you remarked. You said how the Fed reacts and what should it do? I think it's a general rule. The Fed should not be a reactive body. It should be an anticipatory, a leading body. Should drive the car through a front mirror rather than the back view mirror. It should look forward. And therefore, the statements that said we are data dependent, we will not move until we see it in the data, forces to be behind the curve. So fortunately now, Everyone realizes that this was a bad strategy and we need to look forward. But the question is, what now? First, there is a large gap that has been created from where the Fed needs to be to where it is. So it is clear, and that's why the steps were very welcome of raising interest rates with significant steps of, 0 .7, of 75 uh, basis points each round, and I expect it to continue in the, cup, in the next uh, Fed announcement. The question is now, however, mm -hmm. uh, what next? Should the Fed yield to the calls of saying, be careful, go slowly? I think that one you of the... You think not. <laughs> well, I, I am sure not. And the reason is that one of the important instruments of central banks is credibility. Credibility and clarity. So therefore, by being behind the curve for so long, some credibility was eroded. So one of the purposes of raising interest rates now is first to move to the right direction, to the right place, but also to rebuild credibility. I want to say one more point. We are focusing on the interest rate as if this is the main issue. It's an important one. 
But during the period of QE, mm -hmm. a lot of assets were accumulated in the balance sheet of the central bank. And now we are going to the phase of QT, namely quantitative tightening instead of mm -hmm. quantitative easing. When you are talking about quantitative tightening, the quantities that we need now, or the Fed needs to transmit to the market, the quantities are huge. And therefore, yeah. and really unsettle equilibrium. One needs here, one needs to go slowly, but in a very clear way, and the path yeah. needs to be declared in advance. I would not, at any event, give up today the fight against inflation, because this is, this is the sine qua non for monetary policy. Let's admit, much of the trouble that we have did not come from monetary policy. We have a war, we have food, we have right. hope, we have energy. Mm -hmm. We have all of these things that have nothing right. to do with monetary policy. But True. unity is still key. Well, Jacob, point received. Th thank you very much for coming on and, and sharing some of your views and, and what you think central bankers should be doing. I know you're doing that all week long at the IMF World Bank meetings. Appreciate it.